Hello, my name is Ahmed Kara, and I am going to talk about trade-offs in static and dynamic query evaluation. And this is joint work with Milos Nikolic, Daniel Dano, and Hao Zhejiang. Let me start with explaining what static query evaluation means. We are given an input query and an input database from which we can construct a data structure that allows to enumerate the query result tuple by tuple. We are interested in the pre-processing time, which is the time needed to construct the data structure and the enumeration delay, which is the maximal time needed between outputting two consecutive tuples. The dynamic setting is partly the same. We can construct a data structure that allows to enumerate the query a result. Additionally, we consider single tuple updates, that is insertions and deletions of single tuples. And upon each such update, we need to maintain the data structure. And the time to do this is called the update time. In this work, we are interested in the trade-off between pre-processing time and enumeration delay in the static case, and additionally, the update time in the dynamic case. Now I would like to overview known results in the uh, static case and put our results into context. Olteanu and Zawotny have shown that conjunctive queries can be evaluated with n to the power of W preprocessing time and constant delay, where n is the database size and W is called the uh, static width of the query, which is equivalent to the FAQ width introduced by Hung Lo and others in POTS 16. In this two-dimensional plot, where we have the logarithm of the pre-processing time on the x-axis and the logarithm of the delay on the y-axis, the previous result on conjunctive queries corresponds to this point. Pagan, Rajan, and uh, Dora have shown that um, acyclic queries can be evaluated with linear preprocessing time and linear delay. In the same paper, they have shown that free connex queries can be evaluated with linear preprocessing time and constant uh, delay. In our work, we ask about the trade off in case of uh, hierarchical queries. Our result is parameterized by an epsilon that can be chosen arbitrarily from 0 to 1. And it can be described by this plot where we have epsilon on the x-axis and the logarithm of the complexities on the y-axis. The solid line describes the preprocessing time. The dashed line describes the enumeration delay. And by setting epsilon to 0 or 1, we uh, recover previous results for hierarchical free connex queries, conjunctive queries, and acyclic queries. Now let us turn our gaze towards the dynamic case. Nikolic and Olteanu have shown that conjunctive queries can be maintained with n to the power of w preprocessing time, n to the power of delta update time and constant delay, where W is again the uh, static width of the query and delta is its dynamic width. Roughly, you can think of the dynamic width as being the maximal static width of the query when you take one atom out. In a paper that will appear in TOTS 20, we show that the triangle query can be maintained with n to the power of 1.5 preprocessing time and to the power of 0 0.5 update time and constant delay. And this update time is optimal. Ugarte, Van Sumeren, and Idris have shown that free uh, connex queries can be maintained with linear preprocessing time, linear update time, and constant delay. In our work, we ask about the maintenance for hierarchical queries and our Complexities are again parameterized by an epsilon that can be chosen arbitrarily from 0 to 1. Here are some implications. Schweikart, Kepler, and Berkholz have introduced the class of Q hierarchical 
queries and have shown that these queries can be maintained with linear pre-processing time, constant update time, and constant delay. We show that Q hierarchical queries are exactly the delta zero hierarchical queries, that is uh, hierarchical queries with dynamic with zero. And we show that our uh, result recovers the result for Q hierarchical queries. Furthermore, we show that our approach is optimal for delta one hierarchical queries, that is hierarchical queries with dynamic with one. And later I will explain in more detail what optimality means here. This plot visualizes our result in the dynamic case. The x-axis corresponds to epsilon and the y-axis corresponds to the time complexities in logarithmic scale. The solid line describes the pre-processing time, the dashed line describes the uh, delay, and the two dotted lines describe the update time. We have two such lines because for some hierarchical uh, queries, the dynamic width is equal to the uh, static width, and for other hierarchical queries, the dynamic width is uh, static width minus one. By setting epsilon to one, we recover the mentioned uh, results for free uh, connex, delta one hierarchical queries for hierarchical conjunctive queries and delta zero hierarchical uh, queries. Here we have a three dimensional view on our uh, result. On one axis, we have the pre-processing time. On the second axis, we have the update time. And on the third axis, we have the delay. And our approach is uh, represented by this red line and these three points, which means that we recover all mentioned uh, results as uh, special cases. Our approach is the first one that achieves sublinear update time and delay. The gray cuboid in the three-dimensional plot and the gray area in the two-dimensional plot consist of all points that correspond to sublinear update time and uh, delay. And by choosing epsilon appropriately, we can achieve points that lie in this gray cuboid and in this gray area. Our approach maintains delta one hierarchical queries optimally. What does this mean? First of all, we can show that for any delta one hierarchical query, there cannot be an algorithm that achieves arbitrary pre-processing time and n to the power of 0 0.5 minus gamma update time and delay for any gamma greater than zero, and this holds conditioned on the online matrix vector multiplication conjecture. This conjecture says that the online matrix vector multiplication problem cannot be solved in subcubic time. The gray cuboid in the three-dimensional plot and the gray area in the two-dimensional plot consist of all points that correspond to sublinear update time and delay. Our approach achieves every point on this red line and by setting epsilon to 0 0.5, we touch the gray cuboid in the three dimensional plot and the gray area in the two dimensional plot. This means that there cannot be any algorithm that achieves better update time and delay. Now I would like to briefly introduce hierarchical queries. Instead of going into the details of their formal definition, which is given at the top of the slide, I would like to explain them via their graphical representation. Here we have an example hierarchical query and I can organize its variables as a tree where the atoms are at the leaves and the inner nodes of each root to leaf path are the variables of the atom at 
the leaf. And here we have a simple example uh, query which is not hierarchical. In case of delta zero hierarchical queries, we need to be able to construct a tree where the three uh, variables are above the bound ones. Here we have a delta zero hierarchical query with three uh, variables a, b, and c. And as you can see, we can construct a tree where a, b, and c are above all the other variables. And here we have an example query, which is not delta zero hierarchical. Delta one hierarchical queries must obey two conditions. First of all, the query must not be delta zero hierarchical. Secondly, whenever we choose an atom that, that uses a bound variable x, we need at most one further atom using x to cover all three variables that are below x. Here we have an example delta one hierarchical query and here we have a query that is not delta one hierarchical. To sum up, our approach shows a continuous trade-off between pre-processing time, update time, and delay for hierarchical queries. It recovers existing results. It is the first approach that maintains hierarchical queries with sublinear update time and delay, and it maintains delta one hierarchical queries with weekly Pareto optimal update time and delay. As ongoing work, we are extending our approach to conjunctive and aggregate uh, queries and to enumeration in specific orders. And we are also working on an implementation. Thank you for your attention.